confession time. Recently I took an extended period off of the violin, about a month. And that's not the first time I've done that in 2020, uh, the year that it's been. So what I decided to do differently this time is see if I could come up with a way to get 100% back in shape in just seven days. And if I could just put together a system that covers all the basic things that we need for just solid violin playing. So that includes left hand strength and hand framing, giving good clarity and solid intonation. It includes fluidity of right arm, um, making sure everything stays relaxed and is getting a good streamlined motion. I made sure it included a lot of time spent on shifting and making sure that accuracy was there. And finally, it included a lot more advanced techniques towards the end. So we're getting talking about uh, uh, a wide variety of sounds, colors, bow strokes, and making sure that we have a lot of control over what kind of colors we're producing on the violin. So let's really quick go over the tools and the rules that we're gonna use to make this week a success. So the, the tools that I used were uh, scales, three octaves, and also two octaves on one string, uh, three octave arpeggios, sevchik, uh, opus eight and nine, uh, only a handful of etudes from each of those. And then for this point, you have a choice. You can either use the Kreutzer four etudes uh, number two, or Wolfhart opus 45, book one, number one. Uh, either of those will work. Then you need something suitable for sight reading at your level, either at tempo or slightly under. Etudes are great for this. I just flipped to a random road etude for this. Uh, two movements of solo Bach, one slow, one fast, or if you're not to the level that you want to use Bach, you can use um, two short pieces of any kind, really. One slow with an emphasis on phrasing and one faster, ideally with some perpetual motion um, happening so that you have some con constant arm motion in the, in the fast movement. The rules are simple. Um, we're going to use a max of 30 minutes on each exercise. We do not want to get bogged down um, and spend way too much time practicing something. And then also there's a chance that we might hurt ourselves if we over practice. Um, we also want to stop often and check in and relax. So we really need to be constantly, especially early on, checking in and making sure that we are totally relaxed and not um, building up tension as we go. Uh, we want to start small, uh, only a couple of exercises on day one, and we build up from there. We don't want to overdo it early. And we want to pace ourselves. That's very much in the same vein as rule number three. And this is a basic outline that I made of the week. So day one is all about strengthening um, the left hand and creating some fluidity in the right hand, getting back our strength. Day two really has a focus on shifting. Day three, vibrato. Day four and five are both about the bow. Um, those are big right hand in the uh, stuff in the middle of this week. And then by the time we get to the end of the week, day six, um, we really want to pay attention to speeding things up um, and, and kind of pushing ourselves a little bit more now that we've built up the physical strength. Let's get the brain uh, working a little bit harder. And then the final day I used as a review day and worked on things that I thought were a little bit weaker still at the end of the week. Now how I tested this uh, to see if it worked or not is I started on day zero by playing through just the opening of Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, a piece I'm super familiar with but haven't worked on recently. Um, so I, I sort of know the notes, it's familiar, um, I should be able to get through it. So I recorded it once without practicing at all. And then at the end of the week on day eight, I recorded the same opening. And I think there's enough of a difference to validate what I'm doing here. So I wanted to share this process with you and see what you think. We'll see those Tchaikovsky recordings at the end of this video so that you can compare. So on day one, I made it all about getting my strength back. So taking it easy, doing a lot of slow, methodical work that strengthens all of your little muscles so that we're kind of getting back into the flow and into the feel of the instrument. Of course, the first thing that I went to was scales and I just did four notes to a bow, one dynamic, just focusing on accuracy, 
trying to relax my shoulders, trying to keep a straight, fluid bow motion. I paid a lot of attention to getting close half steps and wide whole steps and almost exaggerating sometimes just to kind of get my hand positions into feeling where they should be again. The other thing that I did was make a point of not using vibrato while I was practicing these scales and most of day one in general. I wanted to make sure that this was all done uh, for the purpose of strengthening and for the purpose of getting the notes back under the ear. So paying a lot of attention to intonation and I didn't want the vibrato to get in the way of that. I'm spending a lot of time here with nice, easy, full bows, not worrying about the right hand too much, and just trying to really uh, hone in on the intonation. Now, like I said, I was avoiding using vibrato, and it's kind of hard, especially when you've been away from the instrument for a while, to have that much control, which is part of the reason for trying to not use vibrato during this process. So I went through all the keys, major and minor, four notes to a bow, um, and if, you know, if anything was a little rough, I would just repeat, practice a section, uh, a specific section, um, or even just a, a specific shift if I needed to. Next, I started working on Shevchik Opus 9 etudes. I used numbers 1, 2, and 6. Um, I felt like these gave me a nice, basic, uh, rounded way of practicing my hand framing. And I'm just paying attention to intonation. I'm trying not to vibrate, I'm not doing a great job of it. Now, to finish off day one, because I didn't want to do too much on my first day and get tired and not be able to do as much day two, uh, I just took a piece that's fairly familiar, something that's perpetual motion. I chose the Bach Preludio from the E major partita, um, but you can use anything that has sort of a perpetual motion to it, um, especially if it's got good ways of practicing your hand framing without actually playing double stops. So I felt like this was a good way of warming up my right arm, but also still continuing with this hand framing idea for day one. Now on day two, I moved on to shifting. So we're still paying a lot of attention to the left hand. Um, I wanted to stay there for another day and try to keep that work going and keep those muscles gaining some strength again. Um, but I wanted to change it up at least a little bit. So we spent a lot, I spent a lot of time working on shifting and I used arpeggios and Shevchik exercises to help me out with that. So again, as with the scales and most of our work on day one, um, I'm using no vibrato. I'm really focusing on sound quality, light fingers on the shift, smooth bow changes, doing three notes to a bow, I'm going through all of the keys, just very careful, very methodical practicing. All right, and here I'm practicing a different movement of Bach from what I used on day one. Uh, I changed my mind and decided this was something that I'd rather work on throughout the week. Um, but basically, it's a very similar idea. We're going to slow it down even more. We're going to use as much time as we need um, to ensure a relaxed right arm, um, really clean bow crossings, clean sound quality, good intonation, all those great uh, vanilla sound ideas that we need. Um, for basic violin playing. And so we're going to take as much time as we need during this. We're going to practice really slowly, check our intonation as much as we can, and just kind of go through something methodically really slowly.
Now here I go back to Shevchik to really focus on my shifting. Um, this is Shevchik Opus 8, and I use number numbers 1 and number 8 um, just to practice one position shifting and two position shift uh, two position shifts um, and I'm starting with the easiest version of this which is every note is separated and that gives you a little more time to shift and it just makes sure everything is nice and clean we don't have to worry too much about uh, any slides or anything like that yet and it also encourages us later when we um, speed this up and put the slur on it to release the bow a little bit on the shift. Day three, still focusing on left hand, but we're gonna work on vibrato. Uh, this is finally where I wanna bring this back in, days one and two, trying to keep it nice and dry and focus a lot on intonation and hand framing. And just thinking about half steps, whole steps, distancing, shifting, keeping everything nice and relaxed and building up muscle. So now today, we can finally get into uh, adding a little bit of color to the left hand with vibrato and trying to make that feel natural and loose and also be able to use a lot of different kinds of vibrato as much as possible. Thankfully, we can use a lot of the same exercises that we've been using on day one and two and just add vibrato and make that a new focus now that we've kind of built up some of that intonation and some of that strength. So now that we've made it to day three, I'm feeling much uh, stronger in my left hand. I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with these scales and arpeggios. So I want to add vibrato and start building up my vibrato again. Um, this can be a tough process if you haven't been playing for a while. Um, and I think the most important thing is to take it nice and slow, just like we've been doing with everything else up to this point. So I did all the keys, four notes to a bow. Um, focusing on consistency of sound along with continuous vibrato across note changes and string crossings and especially consistency um, across the full range of the instrument so making sure that the higher register is not too wide and the lower register is not too narrow. The next exercise I used to work on my vibrato was Sevchik Opus 9, numbers 11 and 14. So this is using double stops to practice vibrato, and that just creates a little bit more... Um, it gives you an opportunity to work on your wrist motion along with your fingers, individual finger flexibility. Um, it might be a good idea to practice these exercises without vibrato first, just to make sure your int intonation is in place before we start focusing on the vibrato. And again, we're just really wanting a consistent vibrato as we go up. And now I return to Subject Opus 8, which I did on day two. Um, here I add the slurs except for where the shift happens. Um, and this is just so that we're we're building up this exercise a little bit, but we still give us some, some room for that shift. Now this is not a, an exercise that I used for vibrato. This was specifically to revisit that shifting exercise from day two because we want to build off of everything that we do uh, each day. So every day has to have a little bit of something from the previous days. The next thing I'm working on, and the final thing that I'm working on for day three, is more of a reward than something to practice. So I think it's important to kind of uh, pepper in these little, these moments where you're playing real music <laughs> throughout this week, and we're going to do that more and more as we go, um, just to keep ourselves going so that we're not just stuck in the, in the mud of technique. Um, so I think it's a good idea to use whatever piece you were working on that's kind of a fast perpetual motion. And just play it fast, still practice it, but go through it. Now that we're halfway through the week, it's time to start focusing a little bit more on the right hand, the arm motion, and, and building up our vocabulary with the bow. 
So today is going to be all about um, expanding that vocabulary and day five is going to be part two of this. So we're going to spread this out over the next couple of days. We're going to be focusing on bow, bow crossings, variety of strokes and articulations. And again, I'm just going to start out with scales, but this time I'm doing six notes to a bow. And for every key that I go through, I'm going to use a different dynamic or sound quality. Um, I'm going to, you know, I started with uh, fortissimo and I went down each dynamic to pianissimo and then experimented with different sounding points and um, different weights of the bow. Um, and I also tried to keep the speed of the bow about the same throughout each uh, sound quality. So you can kind of hear a few of the different things that I tried to do. I also did some diminuendos, crescendos, some swells. I'm just trying to be as creative as possible with these scales to um, push my uh, bow arm a little bit more than I have so far this week. next thing I worked on was Wolfhart Opus 45, Book 1, Number 1. Um, and the other option that you can use for this is Kreutzer Number 2, but I've done a lot of Kreutzer 2 in, in the past. I'm not as familiar with Wolfhart, so I thought it'd be fun to try this one out. And basically the idea behind both of these etudes is there's a simple, you know, four or five line uh, etude, but there's all these different bowings that you can try. So you can see uh, you know, if there's one separate and then three slurred. And what you can do is you can do all of these different bowings and you can start them down bow and you can start them up bow. And it's just a good way of experimenting with the bow and, and trying to get a good sound quality with all sorts of different um, combinations. So I went through as many as I could. Today, since I'm splitting this across day four and five, I went through half of the bow options. Um, but do as many as you can do well. This is another bow exercise that I really love. Um, it's doing a very, very slow bow, down bow and up bow on each string, just above the string, trying to keep the bow completely straight and trying to stay as close to the string as possible. It's really tricky. Um, you can see that I'm you know, really having to concentrate on this because it makes your right hand work really hard. And what you can do then is transition that to long, slow bows on the string. So I like to start above the string and then go to on the string. And it's such a good way of just practicing some really slow bows. It takes like five minutes and it really gives you a lot more control over your bow. To finish off day four, I decided to work on a slow movement of Bach. I was working on the final movement of the C major sonata, so I decided to go and work on the third movement, the, uh, the slow movement of, of that same sonata, and just explore as many colors, um, as many phrasings as you possibly can, working with a variety of bow speed, weight, and sounding point, as well as your dynamic range. Day five is basically just going to be a repeat of day four, except we're going to do the other half of the Boeings on the Wolfhart or the Kreutzer Etude, whatever um, you decided to go with. And I also added on the, the fast movement of Bach that I was working on. So I worked on both the third and fourth movement of Bach C major part, uh, sonata. Um, really still just focusing on the right hand more than anything. Um, and trying to play with phrasing, play with colors, um, play with dynamics as much as I can. The only difference I did is instead of um, the three octaves normal scales uh, on day four, on day five I did two octave one string scales. Um, and the reason this is so important is because getting a consistent sound quality all the way up a single string is such a challenge. 
Um, so I decided to work on that on day five instead of the three octaves. Up to this point, we've been taking everything very slowly, methodically, taking our time and making sure that everything is, is in place. But by day six, I think it's time to start opening up our mind and getting our brain to work a little bit faster. Um, so I started with uh, speeding up the scales a little bit. I did eight slurred and eight separate at the tip and then eight slurred and eight separate at the frog. Um, just to keep opening up the bow and keep things moving a little bit quicker than what we have been doing um, while still maintaining good contact with the string and not letting the right arm go on automatic. Also to keep our brains working a little harder, I threw in some sight reading to my day six. Um, I honestly just flipped the page to a random road etude and kind of went at it and if I needed to slow things down I did but I tried to just keep going as much as I could. Another way to get your mind working a little bit quicker is to practice quickly but in small chunks. So again I, I went back to my perpetual motion uh, movement of Bach C major sonata and uh, basically went through either four bars or eight bars at a time and repeated that as much as I could fixing whatever needed to be fixed as I went. I also went ahead and did this with the slow movement as well, um, just to be uh, as inclusive as I could at this late in the week. And the other thing that I um, did on day six, which I didn't take a video, was just practice something new. Just pick out something that you're wanting to work on or that you're about to work on and go at it. This is the time to start. And at the end of the week, I finished with a basically open day for whatever I wanted to work on. And I think this is the way to go because we've been so bogged down in all uh, these strength training exercises and flexibility exercises and fluidity exercises that um, at the end of this, we kind of have to just let it go and maybe dive into some real rep. At the same time, it's a good opportunity to assess what didn't go so well throughout the week, what still needs some work, where you're still feeling a little uh, sleepy in or a little <laughs> relaxed in um, and and spend some extra time with those. So this is very much an optional day uh, in terms of what you want to work on. So I spent a lot of time with hand framing because I was still feeling uneasy about my intonation in general. Um, and I spent a lot of time uh, kind of doing what we did on day six, just opening up, working on some real rep, trying to uh, almost pretend I'm performing a little bit more and getting that natural uh, feel to the instrument again, rather than this kind of etude, uh, one note, one note, um, and, and trying to expand the sounds that I was getting. I also spent a little bit extra time with the Wolfhart um, because I had trouble with those on day five. So I wanted to revisit that, make sure that I was feeling comfortable, that I um, you know, was getting my brain wrapped around some of those ideas and getting my arm uh, a little more um, under control. I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I hope you got some good advice from it. And, and these are all exercises that you can do even if you haven't taken time off and you just want to take a step back and get into things again and really focus on the fundamentals. I think this process or version of it is a really good way of doing that. Now that we've seen all the work that I put in over the past week, uh, let's check out the day zero recording of Tchaikovsky that I made a week ago. And then immediately following, we'll hear the opening that I recorded on day eight.